this is Dave Lee for Six Towns Radio, hopefully asking the questions that everyone else is just too soft to ask. One of the questions that we wanted to know is how the injury is going on. Don't go into too much detail, for God's sake. We just want to know who's playing and who's not. Injury-wise, everybody's fit. So Rory's got a, a slight problem um, that we'll have to sort out next week. I think he might have to go and have a little linear operation. Um, but apart from that, everybody's OK. No, 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 we don't want to know about Perniers, oh my God. Now, we're always one of many players who doesn't seem to be able to get a game at the moment, and I think there must be a reason for this. Listen very carefully in the background when Tony Pulis gives this answer. I'll be disappointed they're not in the team, um, but there's not many people who come knocking on the door. And Surely that's knocking on the door. But there's not many people who come knocking on the door and... Other things that Tony Pillis can't see is the future, apparently. I can't see anything in the future. If I could do that, I wouldn't be here sat talking to you. It's a mystic tone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we don't have to be mystic about is that he's not that keen on Mark Hughes. Oh, we had a little bit of a spat. Two Celts having a little bit of a spat. There's nothing wrong with that. There'll be, there'll be no problems. There'll be absolutely no problems. Celts. Spat. He lives in an Agatha Christie novel sometimes, I think. What a lot of people wanted to know was, how did the relationship with Mark Hughes deteriorate? Who started it? None of your business. <laughs> but at least he wasn't talking about family like he was last week. This week he was talking about Ryan Shawcross and his possibility of a new contract. And Ryan has to do you know, the best he possibly can for himself and his family. He's got a fantastic family, got two lovely little kiddies. Um, and you know he has to look after his family, and that's important. Just couldn't stop himself, could he? But surely he's worked out why we're not winning games. The one thing I didn't think we'd have a problem with now would be scoring goals. And of course, one of the things that people really want to know is, if we're not winning games and we're not scoring goals, why are we playing John Walters? You know, if John's not scoring goals, people will criticise him. Um, and that, you know, he, he's big enough and, and tough enough. The majority of the supporters, if you speak to the sports, they all like John. But there'll always be that group. It's Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, there'll be people who like you, people who dislike you. Yeah, we never get quite a clear answer on John Walters. But one answer we did get was, what does he really think of Queen's Park Rangers? They've never been one of my favourite clubs, actually. If you've heard my other interview, I did actually get to ask one important question. Why, in all your years, have you never bought a left-back? I think that might have been the longest pause at any moment in any press conference ever. Interestingly enough, after he did answer the question, Matt Sandos then piped up about Danny Higginbottom. And before I had a chance to jump in... Danny Higginbottom was on, Yeah, they, they would say he was a centre round. Probably, yeah. That's what but it has to be said, when it comes to asking questions, I was completely wiped out by the way that George Andrews summed up football management. This is what he feels Mark Hughes is doing. It looks as if he's just put him in a bag and thrown him on the pitch, darling. You ask him that. I've got to concentrate on Stoke. So there you go. That's football for you.